What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are doing another Instagram Q&A video today, except you're gonna join me on this gorgeous New Year's Eve day in the park for some questions. Let's get after it. All right guys, question number one is main types of food to avoid for footballers. So this also depends on allergies, this depends on things that you try to avoid just to make a healthy diet. So a normal healthy diet, right? You've got your fruits, your veggies, your proteins, your complex carbohydrates. Those are the kinds of things that you wanna stay with. Obviously, I'm not gonna tell you never to have dessert or never to do, you know, eat fried food or whatever, but it's just straight up not good for you. So the things that I would maybe avoid are super processed food, Foods, uh, tons of sugar like candy and other stuff like that like really really heavy uh, simple carb type foods like your chocolate croissants and your all that stuff I'm not saying that you don't have to do that but that's the stuff that I avoid I'm also gluten and dairy free so I can't eat ice cream I can't eat some of that stuff um, and that stuff helps keep my diet really clean so as far as things to avoid I would say uh, just things that are super processed. Uh, you wanna be able to pronounce the ingredients in your meals, and that's a rule that I live by for the most part. All right, question number two. How has your career been going and what are some of your plans if you can share? So it is currently the 31st of December. It is almost 2022. In 2022, I'd like to sign a contract. I'd like to start every game. I'd like to get tons of minutes after starting those games. And of course, I've got some goal and assists uh, goals as well. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I've got some much more concrete stuff than that that I've been going over, things that I have in my mind, um, but those are kind of the basics. So my career so far, I absolutely loved it. I don't regret a thing. I don't regret going to a D3 school. I absolutely loved it there at Whitman. Um, loved playing in Spain, loved playing in Denmark. Really, really enjoyed my learning experience in Los Angeles. Um, there are some things about it that I didn't really care for, but at the end of the day, it's all about your learning process. It's all about how you go about doing the things that you love and soccer and football is what I love. So uh, how's my career been going so far? Fantastic, 10 out of 10. Uh, there's always things to improve, but I like to look at it with a positive mindset. Um, and then of course, signing a contract in the next month or so for preseason in 2022 is my biggest plan. That's That comes first. And of course, staying fit and healthy, so. Question number two. Nice one, thanks. All right, next question. Have you gone to any college ID camps? How did you get recruited by Whitman and recruiting process tips? That was all part of one question. Okay, so I'll answer the first one. Have you gone to any ID camps? Yes, I went to the Elite 300 camp in Swarthmore in Pennsylvania. And then I also went to, I believe one in California. And I can't remember where it was. California somewhere. And then I also went to one in Seattle for uh, Seattle University and UW. So those were the those were the ID camps that I went to. Um, how did I get recruited by Whitman? So Whitman actually approached me. I sent an email to them, sent an email to a bunch of coaches at Surf Cup uh, or a local Crossfire tournament maybe. It was one or the other. It was a showcase tournament either way. Um, I sent an email to a bunch of different coaches. Whitman ended up reaching out w among a couple other schools and Whitman said, hey, we're super interested. Do you want to come for an official visit? I went for an official visit in the fall, like early, early fall of my senior year in high school uh, absolutely loved it there and then of course just went through the administration administra administration uh, the admission process and rolled that way so pretty straightforward uh, contacted and all that uh, any tips don't expect coaches to come to you this is the truth for the club level this is true for the college level uh, and it's true for the professional and even semi-professional level it is very very seldom that a coach will walk up to you and say and find you. You have to go and recruit yourself to other schools. And it's very, very important to do this. Otherwise, you'll never get into college because colleges won't know who you are, right? So you wanna be proactive. You wanna make a highlight video. You wanna make a CV. You wanna contact as many coaches as you can, of course, in within the guidelines that you have for yourself in what makes uh, a college that you wanna go to, right? So all those things are super, super important. Keep those in mind and uh, yeah. Be your own best advocate. That's my best advice. All-time favorite football boot, Hypervenom Phantom 3.
always, without a doubt, the best football boot. It's the only 10 out of 10 that I've ever worn in my entire life. Next question, best leather boot. Now, if you're talking current best leather boot, uh, I'm gonna give you two answers. One is the Tiempo Legend 9 Elite and the other is the Mizuno Morelia DNA. Both have the best upper, uh, the DNA, debatably the Made of Japan version, is debatably like a better leather boot. So that's like the best quality leather you can find. Anything from Mizuno brand, that is that is what you want to buy if you want the best quality leather. Um, my favorite leather boot though is the Tiempo Legend 9 Elite. That's because of how durable it is, the lockdown, um, how the lateral stability is, all that stuff wrapped into a package that's like seven ounces. So it feels like a speed boot, but it's completely leather and it's just absolutely amazing. But I'd say if you have anywhere between like medium to thinner fitting feet, try the Morelia DNA and those are fantastic. They have a speed boot, uh, sole plate plus the best leather you'll find on any like qu best quality leather and how soft it is and all that stuff um, on the market period hands down how do you see the future of soccer in Seattle this is a awesome question from my very good friend Sebastian who is the manager and one of the coaches at Cultures United the UPSL club that I was playing with um, I have a ton of gratitude to that club first of all um, and to you Sebastian for bringing me in and just it feeling like a family right away, which is awesome. And I just really, really appreciate it. And that is the team that I credit with helping me get back to all my game minutes and game fitness. So heck yeah, go Cultures United. Um, so how do you see the future of soccer in Seattle? Now, Seattle is a very interesting area because it's got obviously the Sounders who have been exceptionally successful in the MLS the last like 10 years. We've made the playoffs every single year. We've done really, really well. Um, so there's a huge base for youth soccer there. Um, we also have clubs competing like Seattle United, Crossfire, and a couple other, well, those are like the two big ones, right? So Seattle United is more on the west side. Crossfire sort of handles all the east side best players. And both of those clubs are the best, like some of the best in the country. Like our teams consistently win, like Seattle teams consistently win Surf Cup, uh, Dallas Cup, the my not Miami showcase but the Florida uh, Disney showcase in Florida um, the national championships I mean we have teams winning the national finals like all over the place almost more so than a place like SoCal which is kind of the other like big mecca for youth soccer so I mean again like I think the infrastructure is is coming it's it's getting better uh, do I think we need many more resources for underprivileged communities that could really use those types of structures to help them develop because who knows you may find uh, you find soccer players in all types of communities right like talent in soccer doesn't really have anything to do with upbringing and you see that in the professional game you see that in the semi-pro game you see that in the club level like kids and some of the best players in the world come from absolutely nothing and some of them come from something right so it, it doesn't discriminate and I think we need to make it so that it doesn't discriminate or that or that the the opportunities that come for those kids are um, are irrelevant of socioeconomic status of uh, race of area where you live so just in Seattle uh, making sure that there are pipelines to get the most talented kids and the kids who really want to work the hardest up into the top levels I think could be super super helpful and we're moving that direction really slowly but uh, it is coming so that's my hope for soccer in Seattle I hope it becomes the absolute mecca for for youth soccer next question which is better overall Nike Phantom GT or Nike Tiempo Legend 9 Elite for my foot type, Legend 9 Elite, without a question. I've worn both extensively. I wore, I'm currently wearing the Tiempo 9 Elite. That's like my current boot of choice. And then the Phantom GT, I wore the launch black and pink colorway. Um, and then I also have reviewed a couple pairs. So I understand, I played in like a, a national, or not a national, but like a regional final, a state final in the Phantom GTs. And they were good, like they're decent football boots. I just, they fit like a quarter size too long. They slip in the heel. There's a, a bunch of little like nitpicky things that I don't like about them. I also have really awkwardly shaped feet. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, short answer though. Tiempo Legend 9 Elite without a question. All right, next question. Does the 9 Elite, the Tiempo Legend 9 Elite, hold up well? 100%. It's got great durability. I absolutely love those boots for that reason. Um, leather boots, 
usually last a little bit longer than synthetic, depending on what you wear them on. Um, I have a firm ground pair and I pr play predominantly on AG surfaces, like artificial grass. So it can get a little iffy sometimes, but that's what I like to use it on. Next question, tips to be a more defensive threat. So this is an interesting question because I don't usually think of like defensive threat as a thing. Um, what I would recommend though, is it's really important to be super good in the air. So you can be really good in the uh, offensive third in the air. Of course, the defensive third in the air. Your one-on-one -on -one defending needs to be spot on. So if you get in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you gotta win those. Um, and then of course your through balls. So for especially for defenders, being able to distribute the ball really, really well is so important. And that's something that especially at the professional level and oftentimes in the levels below that, right? So semi-pro and especially at the collegiate level, you're a defender's ability to play long balls is super, super important. So keep that in mind as you become that defensive threat that you want to be. Next question, what are you most proud of so far in your career? Uh, that's a great question, man. I mean, I've won like some really cool championships. I've played in really awesome places. I think the biggest thing for me, I'll, I'll say two things. One is imparting a lot of the knowledge that I've learned in my career to younger players so that they don't make either the same mistakes that I do or they take my advice and they go and absolutely crush it. That's one piece. I really, really love helping younger players. That's one of my passions. And obviously um, I do some individual coaching as well for some of my closer friends who are, who are like several young, years younger than me. Um, and that's been super rewarding. So that's what I'm really proud of. Um, the other piece of my career that I've been really proud of so far has been uh, the relentless pursuit of excellence and the discipline that I've had. I pride myself on being somebody that works harder than everyone else on the field, um, both off the field and on the field. And that's something, and really truly, like that's something that has been a, a thing for me. Like I train more than everybody else. I take care of my body more than everyone else. I'm not out drinking and I'm not out partying on the off season and I'm not doing that stuff. And it really like, it's really become apparent to me that that's part of who I am, not just who I am as a soccer player. So, so I am Noah Cavanaugh. I am a <coughs> relentlessly hardworking person. And that comes out in my soccer career as opposed to I'm a hardworking soccer player. Once that's gone, who am I, right? So really establishing myself as somebody who's technically gifted, has got, and, and again, like I say that, being like, yeah, sure, I have athletic ability from my parents, but um, but a lot of it has been just like drilled into me. Like I've worked really hard for this. And I think that's what I'm most proud of is like, even if I make it, you know, only as far as National Premier League in Australia or, you know, a really good level in Spain, like third division in Spain or sec fourth division in Spain, like I'm okay with that because it is... It, it, for me, it's about the journey, not the end goal. And obviously I want to win. I'm super competitive. I want to score goals. I want to get assists. But at the end of the day, for me, it's about learning the journey. So I'm really, I'm really proud of the journey that I've had so far. All right. You got any offers or trials coming up at the professional level because of the combine? Uh, I can't tell you that, but yeah, I can't tell you that, unfortunately. But thanks for the question anyway. All right, guys. How has EJ football training helped you get back in shape after injury? So the two, and I spoke about this earlier on in the Q&A, the two people who I credit the most to, well, actually I have three. Um, one is Ibby from OPSM. He's done absolute wonders to my body chemistry and the way that I uh, function as an athlete um, from a gym perspective. EJ from my technical ability. And I mean, he literally like, he actually asked this question. So EJ, huge shout out and uh, forever grateful for everything that you've done for me. And uh, I really appreciate you because like, I mean, I'm sure if EJ you're watching this and for those of you who weren't there, which nobody was cause it was embarrassing as heck. Um, when I first got on the field after my foot surgery, it was a nightmare. I could not like doing just like the simple V turns that you see me doing in a lot of the drills, which is like a staple now were so difficult for me for some reason. And I, I mean, again, I was off for four and a half months. So like 
that motor skill just wasn't there. And I have improved so much since that point. It's just like, you know, again, EJ has done that for me. Um, again, the other that I spoke about earlier was Cultures United, and that's helped with a lot of my game fitness stuff. But um, for this question, like, if you guys don't follow him on Instagram already, EJ Football Training on Instagram has a ton of followers. Uh, you'll find him very easily. Uh, he does so much awesome stuff for the youth and for the new generations. His young teams are like insanely talented. They're all really, really good. Uh, and it is just a, an absolute pleasure to work with him. He's been fantastic. I actually worked for him a couple of years ago, which was super fun right before I got to Australia. Unfortunately, with the YouTube channel and some other stuff, I don't have time for that anymore. Um, but his coaching staff, his, the people who he's around are awesome. So go follow him. Follow his whole page because he's got tons of training drills on his story every single day that you can replicate in your own session. So EJ, thank you, brother. Love you lots. Your jersey number and reason. So I wear number 17. It is my the date of my birth. So I was born on the 17th. And uh, it just is the number that I love. Like I love, I think it's such a cool number. Um, yeah. And two of my best friends also wear number 17. One who plays Frisbee and the other who plays uh, soccer as well in Seattle. So... That's something to consider. Uh, I, it's, it's sentimental to me. I love the number 17, and that's what I do. Who's your next club? Unfortunately, cannot answer that. We're going to move on. What are your favorite football boots? I've already answered that question. In a dream scenario, best question I think I've been asked today. <clears throat> one, club you won. In a dream scenario, club you won. Come up through. Two, become a star at. And three, retire at. Okay? So... Number one, come up through, Ajax. Number two, uh, become a star at, Barcelona. Number three, retire at, Seattle Sounders. Second to last question, any hip opener stretches slash advice? I'm right footed and my left hip doesn't open all the way. Uh, you need to be, well, I would recommend, I'm not a doctor nor am I a physio or anything like that. I would recommend stretching every day, stretching afterwards doing your dynamics beforehand doing hip mobility there are tons and tons and tons of hip opening stretches on youtube on google you can search all of them uh again like i i have i have a couple stretching videos that you guys can follow through those are super helpful um but again like you can get very very specific hip opening stretches on youtube super easily for free and uh yeah, search away. Last question. Here we go, guys. Okay, is the MLS a realistic goal for you next year? Realistic is an interesting one. So are you a realist? Because like when you think about goals, I think you should have goals that are just absolutely outrageous. I think you should have goals that are really attainable. And I think you should have goals that are somewhere in the middle. So when you say realistic, what does that really mean? Um, that's a, that like, you might say like, oh, that's a cop out answer, but no, like really think about how you perceive the world and how you perceive about goals. When I think about my goals, I'm not, I'm not looking at whether they're realistic or not. I'm going to I'm going to look at them. I'm going to say, how do I deconstruct that, uh, reverse engineer how I get there and just do it. And at the end of the day, like if MLS is my goal, then yes, of course it's a realistic goal because I know that I have to take certain steps to get there. I have to play super well right now, train my ass off, get well in the gym, get fit on the pitch, do my technical ability, make connections, probably most importantly, right? Get in with the right people. And then it's, a goal that's going to happen, right? So is MLS a realistic for next year? Yeah, absolutely. But so is USL Championship. So is USL 1. So is NISA, right? So is Finland. So is New Zealand. So when you think about, and I'm, I'm going to rant a little bit because I think this is really important. When you guys think about goals, being realistic is, I'm sorry, it's bullshit. So I'm not, I'm not angry at the question, but I'm also like, ooh, God. Ugh, hair in my mouth. Yuck. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, right, like, I'm not, I'm not angry at the question. I'm just, I'm concerned and, and hopeful that this will be a little bit of a wake-up call for the person who asked this question. I, I don't have the tag written down, and I don't remember because I don't want to call anybody out. But, like, is it realistic, man? Like, 
Hell yeah, it is. Of course it is. Like I'm going to go and accomplish whatever I set my mind to. And if you don't believe that, follow along for the journey, baby. Like let's, let's, let's freaking ride, bro. Like let's, let's get this. And, and when you think about your own goals, like maybe your goal is you think it's unrealistic, but like maybe D1 soccer is your goal. Maybe semi-professional soccer is your goal. Maybe just getting paid to play soccer is your goal. Like whatever it is, go after it. And of course, and then it's, it'll be real. It'll be realistic, but you won't know until you start actually going after it. So that's my, my, that's my philosophy. You got to be action oriented. You got to use the five step process that we talked about, the be awesome process, which you can learn more about on my website. But yeah, that's my rant. That's it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for joining me for this Instagram Q&A. When I post, it's usually on my story. I know it's really hard to keep in, like, you don't have to keep in touch with it all the time, but definitely follow if you haven't already, at noah.kavanaugh. You can find uh, on my story I post probably once a week, once every other week I post some IG Q&A. Answer those really quickly on Instagram, and then, of course, do this long-form stuff, which I love. And that is it for the video. Thanks so much for joining me. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. As always, be awesome, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.